Spring box in All Blacks, folks. It's the rematch after a pretty lopsided game last week. We're going to go through some predictions, some lineups, some stats, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on who is going to take this one out. Obviously, the Spring box after last week, they're in a pretty good place. Uh, they've got a win in the Rugby Championship. Still not top of the log because Australia managed to get a bonus point in their game. But 2016 was really comfortable last week. You feel like that game easily could have been more. Uh, they didn't really seem under threat. And I mentioned, uh, even talking to my mum the other day, uh, that you know, generally as an All Blacks fan, when you watch games and we're behind, there's always part of you which thinks we're going to come back and win it. But that was um, one feeling which you didn't get from last week's performance. The box looked absolutely in control. From a New Zealand point of view, there's a lot of pressure on this game. There is talk that Steve Ian Foster may uh, lose his job. If, uh, if things don't go well. I'm not sure what the measure would be. Would a valiant defeat be good enough to keep his job? Would a win be the minimum requirements? I don't know. Uh, but certainly his position is um, seemingly on thin ice. I don't know. It's hard to know in New Zealand rugby, but he's under a lot of pressure. And if it's a second defeat, it's certainly going to make things a lot worse for for that aspect of his career. Uh, time as All Blacks coach. Um, for the lineups, the Springboks have made a few changes. Some of them are injury enforced. The front row is Oxenshed, Joseph Dweber, and Franz Malherber. Uh, Franz is getting his 50th cap, so big congratulations to him. They were talking him up in the pre-match press conference quite fairly about how, you know, that guy with his scrummaging has genuinely bought the Springboks meterage with the kicks that they get at penalty time from scrums, uh, three points by the bucket load kind of thing. He's been an absolute stalwart for the Springboks for a number of years now. Joseph Dweber wasn't initially named, but he's come in for Bongi and Bonambi, who was kind of a late withdrawal. And then Ox gets a chance to fill the loose head boots once again. So, I mean, I honestly am pretty happy for Dweber to get a crack because behind Malcolm Marks, who was man of the match last week, who's dropped to the bench, and uh, in Bonambi, um, Dweber's kind of living off scrap. So I do think it's good for that third guy to actually get a chance to start a test match against a good opponent like the All Blacks. And, um, yeah, we'll kind of see what he's, he's about. I know he got a bit of time against Wales as well, but still, um, he needs another crack, and I'm, I'm pleased for him. It's Beth and Diaka continue on in the second row, and then Colisi, Dutoy, and Vermeulen are the back row. I read online that that's the first time these three have played together since the 2019 Rugby World Cup final, which is crazy, but I guess Peter Steff has had a long injury layoff, and then Vermeulen has also had a bit of an injury layoff of his own, but that speaks to the depth in South African rugby that they can still be beating the All Blacks one week 26-10 and then the next week be able to feel their World Cup winning back row which we haven't seen for a few years so yeah pretty crazy uh, Hendricks is in at 9 for 5th Clerk remember 5th Clerk got knocked out by Caitlin Clark's knee last week but thankfully he's alright but obviously he's not playing so Jaden who stepped up really admirably uh, gets a reward in terms of starting the number 9 jersey so pleased for him and it's another one that's kind of a bit of depth building isn't it and then Andre Pollard still there at 10 kind of no Hints at changing that at the moment. It'd be interesting to see if Andre plays the entire tournament or if they do rotate things with Alton, or maybe give Willems a go or, you know, somebody else, uh, maybe against Argentina, but we'll kind of have to wait and see. And then uh, the midfield is still uh, Dale Ender. Um, I'm still kind of partly blaming Dale Ender for maybe blowing a try. Um, I've watched it back again, and I still think he should have let that ball go uh, when they had that kind of turnover ball when um, uh, Colisi dived on that ball on the ground, but still um if i'm a new zealand fan looking at this South african midfield i don't know which one i prefer at the moment anyway and then uh jesse creel's come in on the right wing um uh, interesting one because jesse creel i feel like last year when he played you know the end of year tour he played a few games on the right wing i don't remember him doing anything that flash but i guess he's opposite caleb clark who's uh, been named for a second week running for the all blacks so Maybe a guy who's kind of used to playing in the midfield to uh, keep Caleb Clark a little bit more quiet is kind of uh, what you're after. Because I know a lot of Springboks fans would like to see Fussy. I don't think Nkosi is quite back fit, but um, yeah, I think maybe with a mind to keeping Caleb Clark quiet, maybe Jesse Creel is the right choice because Clark, in terms of all the New Zealand outside backs, uh, certainly had the biggest run of the game last week when he actually finally managed to break free and then uh, Damien Willemser who had maybe his best game in a Springboks jersey last week's there at fullback and Mapimpi who was great in the air but didn't get that much ball on the ground is still there on the left wing so kind of steady as she goes with a little bit of changes 
Uh, Marks Kitsoff and Vincent Cock. That's a pretty bloody good front row. That's better than most teams can start. Malcolm Marks, like I mentioned, man of the match last week, won five turnovers. He's on the bench, so you know he's going to bring it when he comes on. Mostert and Visa, the forward replacements who aren't front rowers, plus Quaka Smith, and then uh, Herschel Yankees and Vili LaRue, the uh, the two back replacements. So, yeah, man, I think you'd be pretty you'd be pretty pleased with the. Um, with the Springboks lineup, I'm keen to see how Dweber goes. Like I mentioned, line-out time, obviously, is one they're going to want to get right. But, um, yeah, uh, I think you'd be pretty happy. Uh, for New Zealand, they have also made a few changes. Obviously, not too happy with how things went at the front row, uh, especially scrum time last week. So, De Groot and Lomax up from the bench to start. Uh, big pressure on these guys. And then uh, Tokiaho continues on at hooker. I'm glad that he continues on at hooker because... I genuinely think he's the one All Blacks front rower who's actually having a pretty good time of it recently. So uh, good to see him continue on. White Lock and Barrett are the same lock and duo as last week. And then Frizzell's comes up from the bench at six. Uh, Fozzie was pretty impressed with what he saw from him last week. So he's uh, he's stepping up. Sam Kane is still there at seven. He's captain. And Adi Savia is still there at eight. Um, so yeah, that means uh, Akira Yuani has had to drop to the bench, and uh, Akira is getting a little bit of a reputation for being kind of like a flat track bully. You know what I mean? Like he's kind of able to boss the teams which uh, aren't as kind of physically imposing, but against the Springboks, kind of struggles to impose himself. So maybe that's an interesting reason for the switch. But more interesting is the fact that Richie Moonga gets a start at ten. Uh, Bowden Barrett is fit. Remember, after he kind of fell on his head last week, he's he's all good to go. But he has dropped to the bench. Uh, so Richie's going to have a lot of pressure on him with like Peter Safety Toy just flying out of the line to make his life miserable. So, um, yeah, Richie's going to have to be good, basically. I thought Bodie was, uh, as a lot of people have mentioned, Bodie was kind of one of the bright, um, the shining lights of a uh, rather, I don't want to say dismal, but just like bossed All Blacks performance last week. So, yeah, Richie... Pressure on him, but he needs to, to step up at uh, international level as well. We've seen him do it for the Crusaders. Time for him to do it for the All Blacks. Aaron Smith still there at nine. Uh, Havili and Ioane is maybe a big question mark, man. Well, I'm pretty sure Rico Ioane only passed the ball once last week from the midfield. He had a bunch of runs, but I'm pretty sure he only passed it once, and that was when he was trying to keep the ball in from touch, and he passed it to Stephen Kitsoff. So, yeah. Um, I love Rico, man. He's, he's my blues man, but... Still, uh, the midfield doesn't fill me with too much confidence. But that being said, Caleb Clark, Will Jordan, that's a pretty dangerous wing duo, and Geordie Barrett. But man, they're going to need to catch some high balls. Geordie Barrett's usually the king in the air, and he's been cleared of kind of an ankle injury. Will Jordan's had a stomach bug, but apparently he's still cleared to play. He needs to be better because, I mean, Mpimpy had his number last week, and then Caleb Clark's a big guy. So... His contests up against Jesse Creel are going to be interesting too. Uh, Cody Taylor is in for Dane Coles. Dane Coles didn't really have a flash time off the bench last week, so that's kind of understandable. George Bauer drops to the bench. Fletcher Newell, who's a bit of a big unit for the Crusaders, will get his test debut. Uh, away at Ellis Park is a pretty tough place to get it done, but if you're good enough, man, uh, you'll get it done. So big pressure when he comes on to face like Stephen Kitsoff. Uh, Tupovai is still there on the bench. Akira Ioane, like I mentioned, drops to the bench. And then Finlay Christie, Quinty Pye still there with Bowden Barrett joining them on the bench. So yeah, it's a little bit of changes. I mean, Ian Foster basically said Richie and Bodie, they just kind of had a switch. There's nothing too dramatic about it. And the guys who had question marks about them, Will Jordan, Jordy Barrett, and Bodie Barrett, all cleared to go. Otherwise, they wouldn't be named. Um, so yeah. Bodie, like in terms of his stats, man, it was one of the best ball carriers for the All Blacks last week. So, And I saw some stat also that said he's got really good numbers for like winning percentage. Like the All Blacks win most of the time when Bowden Barrett comes off the bench. But you got to keep in mind that he used to do the super sub role when Dan Carter was playing. So uh, that kind of may go into those stats, kind of take them with a bit of a grain of salt. Uh, last five games, like I mentioned, it's a... Uh, it's, uh, a split with a draw, two New Zealand wins, two South Africa wins, two most recent results. South Africa wins Gold Coast last year. And then uh, last week, 26-10, still getting over that. Average score has now shifted in South Africa's favor, 21-19. But before we get to the predictions, I'll just go over a few stats from last week and from some of the weeks before for New Zealand. New Zealand, in four matches now, have not scored in the first 20 minutes. 
that's conceding an average of seven, and I think the South Africans scored seven last week, right, in the first 20. So the All Blacks are not starting games well. That's 80 minutes of rugby with no points. So I would not like to see them chasing the game at Ellis Park. Ideally, you want to get out ahead, right, and uh, try to put the South Africans under pressure to make them chase the game. But they haven't scored in the last four games in the first 20. Uh, and South Africa, from their point of view, have proved, like, last week, it's not just about malls, right? Like, they scored a lot of their tries against Wales from the mall. But last week, none from the mall. It was, like, turnover ball for the LaRue try and uh, from a kick for the um, for the Aronza try. So, yeah, man, you're going to have to <laughs> you're gonna have to be careful. It's, it's not just that kind of, um, you know one trick pony it's like a it's a multifaceted team that can beat you in different ways last week the Springboks controlled the position they controlled the territory their kicking game was brutal i mentioned the all blacks really struggled under the high ball south africa actually kicked a bit more of their ball uh, than they did against the welsh and why not because it was getting such good pay you kind of can't blame them new zealand were passing the ball like crazy they had like 60 more passes or something than the south africans but we're kind of getting nowhere fast. Um, and interestingly, uh, the All Blacks just don't really kick it that much. Like in terms of the percentage of what they do, do they kick, pass, or run? Very, very few kicks compared to um, compared to some of the other teams around. But then again, the Argentinians and the, the Pumas weren't kicking a lot either. So yeah, maybe it's the South Africans that are the exception. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, predictions-wise, it is the box that our favorites two weeks in a row by four, say the bookies, and by three, says the rugby forecast algorithm. It is at Alice Park, so the altitude's going to be a factor. It's a 5.05 local kickoff, which makes it 3.05 here in the morning for us at NZ. Uh, Luke Pierce is the ref. And um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see how this goes. As I said, man, Fozzie is under a lot of pressure here in New Zealand, so if his players want to stand up and... Uh, show what he means to them if it is you know um a game where you want to fight for your coach this is the game to get it done if uh if they kind of go about seemingly the same way last week where they just kind of get monstered and struggle then um it's kind of hard to justify foster's position uh from a springboks point of view man you want to go two from two i've mentioned before i know the springboks will be confident going to australia but their recent record in australia is poor so get as many games in the bag now, especially your home ones, and um, see what you can do in Australia. You guys let me know your thoughts. If you want to watch the game and you're in the States, it's on Flow Rugby. So I'll put a link down in the description to Flow. You guys can watch it. Otherwise, let me know your thoughts, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.